I was born in Hamburg, Germany in uh, 1925. And I also have a sister who was born five years earlier. My father uh, was, came from Togo, which was a German colony. And they lost the, the colonies in World War I. So uh, when my father came to Germany, he was brought to Germany by a nobleman when he was seven years old. And he grew up there and was educated in Germany. And then later on he went on his own and first he sold, uh, he, he was, he sold uh, cigars and then he decided to, when he was 20 years old, he decided to go to Africa. And when he went back to Africa, he brought back an herb. And out of this herb, he made um, toothpaste and tooth powder and also tooth water. So he opened up his own factory and was very successful. After a number of years, uh, things went bad and he went bankrupt and lost all the business. And then he went back to Africa and never returned. In the meantime, I, I have another sister. My other sister was born in 1927. And when I was a year old, my mother sent me to a, a home it was a private orphanage, and I stayed there for about 10 years. That was on the outskirts of Hamburg, a place called uh, Großbostel. I grew up there and was quite happy because it was uh, lovely uh, surroundings with a beautiful garden, lots of fruits and berries. And there were children there, but not too many. I was the oldest one there. And I often have to look after the children and do different things. When it was time to, for me to go to school, I went to a school there in a small town for about a year, and then when I went to second grade, when I had to go into the second grade, I went to uh, uh, to a Waldorf school. They sent me to a Waldorf school. And there I had to make a long trip every day, take the train all through the town of Hamburg, to the city of Hamburg, to arrive at the, uh, at the school every morning. How old were you? I was then about s eight years old. You seven, by seven, yourself, by myself, yes. Mm -hmm. On the streetcar was this tram, they call it tram. Uh -huh. And for me it was uh, quite a, I had to get up very, very early in the morning and took this long train ride and it was quite the uh, experience for me each day to be on the train with all those people and and the smoke, cigar smoke and cigarette smoke made kind of an impression on me. But I was very happy at the school. I had wonderful teachers and they really um, s remained with me f throughout my life. But it was very traumatic I was the only black child in the school and at recess time it was it was uh, very very dramatic and very hard for me to go out and face all these children because they had never seen a black child before 
and they were always uh, gathering around me and touching my hair and touching my skin. And so it, this went on for quite a f quite a while until then the teacher decided to uh, keep me inside during recess time. So later on, as time went on, this, they were they are uh, starting to uh, close all the the private school, and all the Waldorf schools had to be closed. And the school I went to why, was why was that? Because of uh, Hitler. They closed all the private schools. Um, what exactly did you know about that or at that time, and what did they tell you? Well, what well, the way it really was. When I was in the school, some of the parents had made complaints about me being there. And so the teachers uh, decided to, uh, uh, that was just about during the time when they were closing all the schools, the Waldorf, especially the Waldorf schools. The Nazis were doing The Nazis closed all the Waldorf schools, and by me being there, they thought it had sort of a, you know, a baron on it, on somehow it affected. So they told me that I would, I, I can no longer continue to go there. But at the same time, they were closing. And this, the school I was going to was the last one to close. They had closed all the Waldorf schools already, and the school in Wandsbek in Hamburg was the last one to close. So it was sort of a in between, you know, the by me being there and by them, you know, being after the schools, closing them up. Did you know anything so, about why they closed any of the other schools? Or, I mean, what the reason was given for closing these schools? No, I really don't know the, the, the really fine and the, the details. Mm -hmm. Later on, they closed all the private schools. They were only public schools. They only allowed public schools. Mm -hmm. But that was later, but they were after the Waldorf schools. So I had, I was very fortunate. My teacher found a, a retired, I think she was retired, anthroposophist, and she was willing to uh, teach me privately, which she did for about a year. Uh, maybe you could say a little bit about your family's relationship to German people, you know, um, before or during this time, and what their relations was with their neighbors? Well, yeah, well, I, I can only say that, you know, even my childhood, people were always looking, and uh, and many times we were admired because of our dark skin, but it was never in a, in a malicious or vicious way, and I can only, you know, say that I was always treated very well, and I had wonderful friends who always uh, stood by me and and um, everywhere we went it was just that people would look but it wasn't in a mean way that they would uh, uh, it's just to them it was something they had never seen and but you weren't aware of much prejudice or anything like that from the German no no I don't I never felt I never experienced any prejudice uh, not at all, and as, as, uh, on the contrary, you know, wherever uh, p people could help you or further you to education, they never held you back, saying, you know, we, we don't. Only until towards the, when the war was going on, it came out that Hitler, Hitler said that we weren't allowed to study. So that, that was Who's we? my sister's. We couldn't go to universities or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That wasn't, uh, and then uh, towards the end, there was, the war was on the, uh, the war was going on then, that was in 19, when Hitler became very powerful. He uh, said that we couldn't, uh, we couldn't go to the sp um, sports, you know, where the stadiums, mm -hmm. we couldn't go to the stadiums anymore. We couldn't go to the, um, to the uh, swimmings, you know, to the swimming halls anymore, and we weren't allowed to to uh, study further our education. How did you get the, the this kind of information? How were you told? 
that you couldn't go to these places. How did you know that? Oh, they were t they were, we were told by the teachers from the school. Uh, the Waldorf school? No, or? no, no, that was, that was later on okay. when we went to public school. So were you, you were in still in, a, in a, a lower school or an elementary school? Right. And the teachers told you that you couldn't come to sporting that events? That you couldn't go to the sport, you couldn't participate in, in the sporting events, uh, sporting events. You couldn't participate, you weren't allowed to go there. And Can you remember, I mean, how it was put to you, or, I mean, did they say this is the government, the government says this, or, or how was it? Yeah, they were told we, we, that we were sent home, they were, a note was sent home to, to my mother, telling her that we were long, no longer allowed to, to participate in any, uh, you know, sport events, or uh, at, the, at the swimming and other sports. That was no longer, it's just like, you know, it was handled like the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. How did your mother respond to it? She just had to accept it. Mm -hmm. She said, what can, I, what can I say? I can't fight them, I can't go against it. Yeah. So for us it was co uh, quite uh, sad. And then uh, another thing I also have to say that when my, uh, maybe I shouldn't go back. See, we were stateless and they branded us also. Even though we were born in Germany, I was, or I was born in Germany, my sisters, we were all born in Germany, but uh, we were stateless because my father, and he came from Africa, he never natural, he never became a natural, you know, n how did you say it? Naturalized citizen. He never became a naturalized citizen. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know whether he would, I think, at the time, he would have been able to, to, to do it. And I think he was allowed to do it, but I'm not sure. But at the, so that left us staying, uh, stateless, even though we were born in Germany. But when you are born in Germany, when no matter, uh, it, it's always, you are always what your parents are. If your parents, my father was stateless, he was not uh, a, a German citizen. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we were stateless. And that would made it uh, very difficult for us, because as as we were on, we, you know, they would always say, "Well, you are, you know, you are a stateless person. Mm. You know, you're not a German, even though you're born in Germany." But other than that, I, I, we have, uh, there was no um, any that we were treated badly, or that 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 we couldn't go anywhere, uh, couldn't go places that that uh, it was just like when we were children, when we couldn't participate. But other than that, you could go any place you would like to go. Nobody would say you can come in here or come in there. Mm -hmm. and what, what was your uh, mother doing at this point to support your family? She had the store. She had the store for about 30 years. Did you say exactly what kind of a store this was? Um, well, it was an uh, antique, antique and, and uh, Second, it was a combined. Antiques and it was yeah. She but it was more antiques than, than anything else. You mentioned the Fund, the, the, the name of the the name of the store was uh, um, a Fundgrube. What does that mean? A found a, a found a treasure. Uh -huh. Found treasure. And she ran this business on her own. Well, no, she and and the f uh, her friend her friend did. Um, she didn't do it all by herself. So did you see much of, uh, of the uh, Nazis, the parades and whatnot, and that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I did. You know, every, every uh, you know, there were parades, not too many in Hamburg. But I did, uh, I do, I did, uh, I, I remember one when I was small that we had to, in school, we all had to turn out to go there to, to uh, when Hitler came. And what was that like? And that was uh, was very interesting. Was you know, it was just something that uh, I I will always remember. Well, seeing seeing Hitler on that you know like, going by in the in the in the in the car you know. In the, uh, How far away were you? Oh, I was far away. Hmm. 
I was far away. I did see him, but I was mm. far. I was so small, I had to peek through. Mm. And they wouldn't, you know, whenever you wanted to get closer to it, they would just push you back. Mm -hmm. What did you call this when they, when they, you know, like the police? They all hold hands. Yeah, I don't know and what they're called. Yeah. Crowd control. Something. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. Um, but that was about the only time that I ever recall, you know, seeing Hitler. He didn't come to Hamburg very often. Um, as a kid, I mean, did you, uh, you have any feelings about these people? I mean, the, the power structure at that point? Uh, were you, did you feel threatened? Were you... Uh, no, I never did. Did you know what was going on? I mean, uh, I mean you know, what was your awareness at that point of what was happening in the country? Well, I, I really didn't, I, I really didn't, uh, I never thought about it. And it was never really, uh, we were really more concerned as the war, when the war started, we were all very much concerned about, you know, having enough to eat. Mm -hmm. Because things were beginning to, you know, putting on ration. And, um, but other than that, there was never, uh, uh, I never had any, problems that people would say you can't do this or you can't come in here for most of the Germans we were dark skins and there was always something special to them. Mm -hmm. We were always something special and sometimes they would even uh, uh, be extra nice. Mm -hmm. So all, all during the war I, I never had any uh, uh, any problems. Uh, were you, you aware of what was happening to other minorities, though, like the Jews and gypsies? Yes, I, I do, because I had a girlfriend, a very close girlfriend of mine. We lived, we grew up together. We didn't go to the same school, and uh, but there were three of us. One of us in that picture, the, and she was Jewish. She was half Jewish. Her mother was Christian, and her father was Jewish, and they were very well, very well. Today owned a lot of... Uh, uh, not restaurants. Yeah, but restaurants and where they have uh, like shows. Cabaret. Yeah, cabaret. Exactly. They owed sell several. They had several of them, and they took that away from them. And um, little by little, they would. Um, they took that away from them. Then they had to move out of out of our neighborhood where we lived, and she had to move into a neighborhood where all Jewish people were living. And in the meantime... What we, year would that be about? That was in 1939, 1940. Uh -huh. And I remember we would meet, we would meet, and she had to wear the star, the yellow star. Uh -huh. And uh, so I then, you know, we wanted to go into town. We were, we were very close. We grew up together. And then she, then I said, oh, I said, take that star off, you know. And uh, she said, no, I can't, because people in the neighborhood would uh, always watch her. Mm -hmm. So she said, I can't. And then sometimes she, in the beginning, she was, she, she did it, and she would put her pocketbook, you know, over, over the star. But then, uh, as time went on, she, she could no longer do it, and then she moved in. She had to move into a, a neighborhood where all Jewish people were living, and they all lived, the whole family had to live in, in, in one room. That's how they reduced them, reduced everything. Do you know what happened to them? Yeah, she went, in, she went into a concentration camp, and her brother, she had an, uh, her brother, they, they hid him somewhere the whole time. Who hid him? My, my girlfriend's brother. They were twins. Yes, but who, who hit her? Her aunt. Uh, an aunt did. Should be a Christian aunt? Or I think she was a Christian aunt. Yeah. I think she was the aunt on her mother's side. Uh -huh. I remember that she was a tall woman. She had a store. So throughout the war, this boy Throughout was the war, I don't know her name. His name was Günther. Uh, I don't know where. Not until this day. And even my girlfriend, she was always in touch with them later on but after I came to the States. And they never revealed where they hit him. But he survived the war. He survived, and, and she survived also. She was just lucky. She was in a concentration camp, and her father was in a concentration camp. They didn't bother the mother. And then she, um, she got, 
I don't know what concentration camp she was in, but just before the war was over, the Americans were already coming in into what the Americans were coming into Germany and they had the Nazis had undermined the whole concentration camp they were going to blow it all up and the Americans just got there in time so this was outside of Hamburg that I don't know exactly no I don't know oh. where that concentration camp was mm -hmm. I don't remember I but don't know you met her again after yes, the war yes I saw the whole family after the war mm -hmm. I just happened to run into them and then after that, I never saw them again. Did the father survive? The father survived. The whole family, I saw them all together, right after the war. So um, she had the, she had all her hair cut off. They cut off her hair. She was all bald. And but she survived it, and just by the by the you know by the um, skin of her teeth, the Americans beat them to it. Otherwise, they would have. They were ready to blow up the whole thing. And, well, you know, the war, the war raged on. Well, we like had you mentioned to, um, having to take shelter from the bombing. Yeah, we had to, uh, we lived in, the, uh, where we lived, uh, the, the bombing was going on day and night. We always ran into the uh, bomb shelter down below. My mother would never go. She would stay upstairs, and then one time, uh, our neighbor, she reported my mother to the, uh, to the, uh, to the um, to the authority, you know, to the Nazis, and but they didn't do anything to her. They said the Frau Anumu, you know, that's my mother's name. She is she stays upstairs to give signals to the enemies. That was our that she our neighbor, and, right. and uh, because my mother said I don't want to die, I don't want to die in the in the in the bomb shelter. And if mm -hmm. they drop a bomb on the on the house, then I'm gone. But I don't want to suffer the slow, you know, uh, slow death. So she always stayed. And my sister and I, my my oldest sister were married. My oldest sister was married, and lived in the, another part of town. It was just me and my sister, and we would always go and go into the bomb shelter and 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 wait, you know, until it was clear. Your oldest sister married. Yes. Now, is she married to a black man? She married a black man. Would you say a little bit about the black community in, in Hamburg? Then? Well, there, was, there wasn't really a black community. They were all, you know, the, the black people who lived in, in Hamburg, they were, you know, were all scattered around in different places. There wasn't really a... And where were they from? Uh, they, they were all, most of them were mixed. They were African men who were married to German women. And uh, as a matter of fact, my sister. How were marriages like that treated over there? Well, oh yeah, that's I have to say that they the marriage. Well, the the ones that the marriage that took place, you know, during uh, earlier time before Hitler came, that was fine. But then after, when during the Hitler time, they weren't allowed to get married. Mm -hmm. They could live together, but they weren't allowed to marry. Mm -hmm. But there were still uh, white Germans who were living with with black Germans oh, during yeah. the war. Yes, they would yeah, take up yeah. Life together. Yeah, they they lived together, but they weren't uh, they weren't allowed to get married. Mm -hmm. Even my sister had a hard time, and her you know her husband was black, she was black, and even the you know they gave her a hard time, but they she. Didn't, they didn't even want blacks to marry. Well, they made it a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. I don't know what what the story was, but she, she did get married, you know, legally, you know, Standesamt mm -hmm. and everything. Do you know anything about these interracial couples, how they were treated by their neighbors? I mean, it's, uh, it seems a little amazing that they would even, that that would even happen at that time in their history. Yeah, I don't, I don't know too many. Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, I, I only know a few because I'm my, my brother-in-law had, uh, my brother-in-law had friends. He was always, well, they were, they, yes, I do have to say that, but I don't know too much about it. There was an a, a area where a lot of more black people were coming together. Mm. I don't know whether they lived, some lived in the area and some would come there because there were a lot of, uh, that was like the, not as, a, that was like the, the town, like you would say, uh, where there's a lot of discos and a lot of uh, people from seamen would come there.
you know, black seamen, mm -hmm. when they when the ships come into Hamburg, they would go there, and my brother-in-law would hang out there a lot. And some even, you know, he 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 had a girlfriend. He had a girlfriend too before he married my sister, and she was white. And they lived, you know, whenever he came from the ship, that's where he went. So your brother-in-law was a black German. He was black, yeah. And, and a seaman. Yeah, and the seaman and my sister. What was he doing during the war? He was on the ships. On, on German. He was on German merchant, ships. Merchant ships. He was on German merchant ships, uh, cooking, cooking and baking. Mm -hmm. He was back and forth. He didn't go out very far. He went to, you know, uh, just short trips. But they were, these were German ships. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he, he would. Um, they were all interracial, you know. They were half, you know, like most of the women was the women were. Um, uh, white and the men were black. So I know my sister. She had a, she had a boyfriend, and he he married. He and after that, when they broke up, he lived with a woman, a white woman, and they had two children, but he couldn't marry her. That he was during the war. That was doing. He he wasn't allowed to marry her. Mm -hmm. The uh, SS or the Gestapo didn't bother them, huh? These interracial couples. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. So they were. They were. They were quite. You know, now that I think about, it, they were quite a few. But I never, you know, get, got involved. You know, I only know from my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law. My my sister. You know, they. He was more. He was very. My brother-in-law was very color-conscious. In, in so many ways, but even though he lived with a, you know, he lived with a, a, a white woman, but it was always his desire to marry his own, you know, mm -hmm. a marry, mm -hmm. to marry a black woman. Mm -hmm. So, um, so he he hung out a lot, you know, with black people, but they were just people who coming from the ships. Mm -hmm. In 19 uh, in 1943, when they uh, bombed Hamburg, you know, day and night. That's when we lost everything. Until then, all during the during the bombing, we always were able to go back to to our home. Mm -hmm. But that was uh, already uh, uh, the Americans and the English, the British already had told us we're gonna wipe out the whole city. So did your house actually get hit or, or what? And yeah, it got they, they bombed it. They mm -hmm. bombed. We, we had an apartment. We didn't have a house. They so bombed the apartment in my mother's store. My mother's store was about two, three blocks away from where we lived. Well, what was that day like? It was awful. Why don't you tell us about that? I never forget that day. I never forget it. My mother, uh, in the meantime, my sister was married, lived in another part of town, and she was bombed out. If she, and if she hadn't have gone into the bunker, you know, there was a the high bunker, not a, underneath, but it was a tall. Mm -hmm. So when my sister, um, she went, she just took the child. She had, she lived in a garden apartment, and the and the bunker was about a half a block away. So sometimes she wouldn't go because she figured, oh, you know, maybe just one one plane, and then they just, you know. But this time she just took my niece. My niece was about a couple months old in a suitcase and she ran into the bunker and um, so when she that was very heavy bombing that day and everything when she came back when she came out everything was leveled everything was gone so um so the, she stayed she came to stay with us that was in 1943 in the summer it was in june in july it was very very hot they just said if, if you if you uh, stay in the city, it's you are it's you are under your own risk because we won't be able to to dig you out. That's how bad it was getting, you mm -hmm. know. And they were getting they were taking all the old men, the old people. They they drafted them to you know to clean up and and rescue people. So my sister stayed with us for a couple of weeks. No, not even a couple of weeks. Maybe a week or so. And then uh, my my older sister with the baby and my younger sister went uh, just got on a train wherever they got off. That's where they were going to be. 
so they said it's the best thing for them to do because if, especially the the mothers who have babies they shouldn't mm -hmm. stay in the city so my sister and my younger sister my older sister my younger sister they they went and I stayed with my mother so they um, they went on a train and they didn't they didn't know where they were going to go uh, and then they wound up in uh, South Germany, in Bavaria, in Bamberg. But in the meantime, but it was a long way off, you know, they were just on the train for days. But in the meantime, I stayed with my mother, and so we, <coughs> my mother said, oh, she said, I'd, so if we had uh, Oriental, you know, we had a lot of Oriental, a lot of uh, antique stuff. And we rolled everything up, and uh, some of the stuff she put down in the in her store because she always said, "I don't think both places are going to be bombed out." So we took our stuff, we took a lot of things, and put it in the store. And then, you know, I had a bird, I had a, a parakeet. It was so sad. So that it was the last day, and I remember saying the prayer, hoping that you know I'm going to come back. So we left. We didn't stay, usually we stay, but this time my mother, it was really bad. So we went, took our suitcases, that's all we had. We took our bicycles and we went out to the seashore that was outside of Hamburg. And that night, that night, everything was demolished. That night, it was a clear night, it was just very warm and she could see, she could see, she said there, uh, she said they're bombing. They're bombing our district now. She said it's I, and the Americans. You know they had these. Um, they were throwing these these phosphor things. Yeah. These look like Christmas tree when you see them in the, yeah. when you see them in the air. Kind of like uh, flares. Right, right. But they look like Christmas trees, mm -hmm. and they were just all over Hamburg. We could see that from the beach. Mm -hmm. They were all over, and so my mother said. But this time she said it's nothing it's gonna stay and it and it was true. So the next day I never forgot this was really an experience. So the next day we we didn't you know, you still hope, you know, maybe, 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 maybe there's gonna be uh uh maybe not. But so I said to my mother I was very, very brave and that that's that's the picture I have when uh, Billy has that picture. So I said to my mother, I'm going into, I think maybe our apartment is still there, maybe the store is still there. And she said, I don't think you should go. And I said, well, I'm going. You know how you are when you are young. So I took my bicycle and I went. And as soon as I approached the apartment building, it looked like it was still standing, but it was only a shell, mm -hmm. you know. But from the distance, you thought it was all because all the other houses were on fire. You know, it was so dark that night. It was pitch dark, just like uh, like 12 o'clock midnight. And that was like in the daytime, 12 o'clock noon. That's from the smoke? Yeah, it was just pitch dark. And I had I had a, a handkerchief. I, I, I saved that for a long time. So I put the handkerchief over my face, and I was on my bicycle. And then I, as I approached the, uh, the apartment house from the distance, I said, oh, yes, it's still there, you know, everything is there. But then as, as I came closer, it had already burned out. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I, you know, I was about just, a, I don't know, very, I was very close, just a few feet away, the whole thing caved in. And so that was it. That was it. So, and I didn't go over there where, we, where the store was because it was sweltering, it was burning, it was burning, it was burning. Mm -hmm. And then you see dead bodies all over the place. So I, I was, I don't know how I, I don't remember how I went back, but I didn't, my, I, I, I was able to ride my bicycle. I don't know how. Did you get back to the I think, seashore? Uh, I went back to the seashore. Mm -hmm. So I think. How did your mother react to the news? Well, she, t t t t I see, I seen such a change in my mother after that, you know, after that, because she kept saying, after all these years, you know, you work so hard, and, and, uh, you know, my mother was always a little bit sophisticated, mm -hmm. and so, you know, that was it, you know, to see my mother in pants, you know, and and 
all dirty, you know, this i never seen before. So she said, well, this is it, you know, this is it. And I, I could see the chain. It seems like my mother got gray overnight. And Did the, your family or, your, well, your family or yourself have a, a, a kind of sense that the Germans were the, the bad ones in this war? I mean, or did that not really enter into things or, or what? I mean, The Germans? No, I not mean, no, n not for me. I don't know. I mean, how did you feel about the Allies bombing your uh, your city? Well, it was terrible. I mean, it was awful. Everybody was uh, talking about the tummy. They call it the tummy. You know, the British. Yeah. They call it the tummy and the the ummy, the ummy, ummy on tummy. But you didn't you didn't necessarily you or your family see the uh, the Germans as the aggressors and the bad guys. Um. No, not, not, you know, it was just that the war was on. I mean, they, they were fighting, and it was terrible to, you know, to uh, be in there a victim. Mm. And then I remember that people were coming, the German soldiers were coming home f on, on, f on leave, mm. and uh, I, I, yeah, there was a guy, he lived in our building, and he, he said, I'd rather be on the front line than being in the city than being home and just waiting for death, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't defend myself with a gun or anything. I just have to sit here and wait for death. So they, they, they said, well, we are worse off. You know, they, they sent us home for leave and look for their family, you know? Some lot of children, a lot of people were being killed. But uh, they said that, uh, what can we do? Mm. But, um you, you folks, I mean, your family and everything were pretty well Germanized then. I mean, in a sense... Um, yeah, very much so. I mean, you did, you, it doesn't sound like anybody was very political or anything. Or, no. I mean, you had these Jewish friends who were, who were put out of business, so to speak, and, right. and put away into whatever... I mean, I, you know, if they were, were they called concentration camps? I mean, uh, I mean and what did that mean to you? And, and it, uh, but yet, you know, it's still... It, it's it was... Still in, 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 within you, it, it still didn't... Uh, make you think that uh, I'm on the wrong side here or anything like that? I mean, well, it was, it, in, in one way it was. It just all depends on how you took it because what, what could you do? You couldn't, yeah. you couldn't fight, you know, you couldn't say anything. And it, it, I mean, sometimes... But I mean, was that really in your mind or, or what? Yeah, that, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm, maybe this is the way I am. My, my sisters were a little different. You know, you just accept things as they are, mm. you know. I, I couldn't do anything about it, and I just, in, in this, you go into the store, I mean, I wasn't like, you know, like this. Mm. I was just whispering it. There was some time you go into the store, you had to say, Heil Hitler, mm -hmm. you know? To who? To this, to this storekeeper, uh -huh. you know? And he had the big sign outside his store, Any, every, anybody who enters has to say, Heil Hitler. Okay. That was our... That was our milk, where you buy milk and cheese. Uh -huh. Yeah, Milchman. And he, he, he was, uh, you know, I mean, he was a, he real, was a Nazi. real Nazi. Yeah. So my mother, you know, they were people, some Germans were, you just had to be, my mother would say, oh, that guy over there, he's a big Nazi. You better not say anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you could say this story. They say, oh, they are okay, you know. Mm -hmm. They just go along with the, but, mm -hmm. but some of them would say, don't you say Heil Hitler, you know, you, you don't come into my store if you don't say Heil Hitler. Mm -hmm. So that's the way, so it was like, you know, s some, some were like on one side and the other one say, well, you know, what can I do? I don't want to go into jail. I mean, I don't believe what he's doing. I'm against him, you know. Maybe after it's all over and Hitler win, I'm going to go, you know, go into the concentration camp. Who would say this? Uh, some Germans, yeah. you know. See, it wasn't only the Jewish people they were after. Many, uh, uh, many Germans were put away. Mm -hmm. And my brother-in-law, he was an anthropocephist. One time they came to his ship, then they confiscated all Rudolf Steiner books, mm -hmm. took them away. Um, so You were a teenager in high school at this point, right? Yeah, right. Um, uh, do you remember in, in uh, what how history was being taught at that point. I mean, you're being indoctrinated uh, in your classes in any way, I mean, about the, what was going on? Or? No, well, they mostly was, it, it was also taught about, you know, Hitler, you know, and but everything is good, and mm -hmm. 
but uh, it, it all the, you know, some of them. I did go to a private school for as long as I could. Mm. You know, my mother put me, when I, after I left this teacher, I went to another uh, other private, I went to a Lutheran school. Mm -hmm. So there it was, the teaching was completely different. Somewhat more liberal? Or? Yeah, yeah, it was more, and it was on, also on a religious basis, and they, they were teaching, so uh, it was n not like in a, in a public school. They even didn't they have to teach some kind of curriculum that was uh, how it reflected on the current government? Yeah, no, or? not not in the private school, really? not in that, no. But the the public school they did. Yeah, yeah in the public schools. Hmm. So. So how did the war end for you guys? What was it like? Uh, when we came, you know, after we had lost everything, we just, you know, there was. Where were we gonna go? We didn't have no. Uh, some of some people, Germans, had little, little uh, uh, summer cottages where they could go to, but we didn't have we didn't have it. So we had friends um, in East Germany, Thuring, and that's where we went. What's so the name of the town? Thuring. That's in East German. Mm -hmm. Thuring, and in Mühlhausen, it's the the town was Mühlhausen. So we stayed there. Now this is just my mother and I. My sister's already there somewhere on the other end there mm -hmm. in Bavaria. Were you in touch with them at all? Uh, later on, later mm -hmm. on. So we stayed there and then, um, uh, you know, people, it was very strange, you know, when you come into the places, the town, even Bavaria, where people were, didn't even know what was going on. They had their homes, everything was nice and clean and, and tidy and beautiful, polished. And here come the people who, you know, all dirty, bombed out. Mm -hmm. So nobody wanted them, you know? And they would look down on them and they say, here comes the, here comes the bombed out people. We, I don't, not in my house, you know? Mm -hmm. and were the authorities uh, kind of telling these folks though that they were supposed to take these refugees? Yes, out? yeah. And then, but there was one thing, there was one thing I have to talk about is my sister, my sister, my mother, my sister, and her baby, and my other sister. So my oldest sister, my youngest sister. So nobody wanted to take them. They needed a place to stay. And they went to the authorities, you know, they give p people to stay. And then uh, that was, they, that was, uh, it was kind of a dramatic experience. I don't know, for some reason. I don't know whether because they were black or what, but anyways, they just didn't, uh, they had a hard time. And then they found a nice, then finally there was a professor. He had a big house and just him and, and, the, and the housekeeper. And uh, he, he said, I will, I will take them. So that's where they lived. How, uh, how long did it take them to find the place? I don't know, I, that I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I remember my sister said they really were, you know, some of the people, they probably said we're here and then the people would say no, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it's l not like, it wasn't so much the color, I believe, but people don't know, you know, mm -hmm. and especially in, in South Germany, it's very, very different. Mm. They are com they're completely different mentality. In what way, what would you say? Uh, More provincial? Uh, more, yeah, more um, clannish, uh -huh. you know. If we don't know anything, if we don't know you, if you come from a different town, I don't want you in my house, okay. you know. Country folk. Right, I don't know anything about you. And, you know, I think it was more or less uh, that than, than the color, yeah. you know. Yeah. Because they made wonderful friends later on, and, and they really went all out. And my sister lived there for 10 years, my younger sister. So what happened to you and your mother? So we went to Turing and then we stayed there for a while. With, with who now? With friends. Okay. These were the people I didn't, I never met them, but they were Germans. Mm -hmm. And we stayed there for, for about a couple of, couple of months. Where, where exactly did you stay in their house? In, in, in the, we, I slept on the couch. Me and mm -hmm. my mother, we slept in the living room. They gave up the living room to us. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have a very big apartment, I, I remember that. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, uh, they didn't have a house. Like my sister, they, they had it, you know, the man gave up his, you know, not the whole house, but he you gave them nice. they did nice. for a living? 
or the people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was a retired businessman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Be no, no, no. He was a tailor. He was a tailor, but he was retired. And he was just a friend of your mother's? Or? Yeah, he was just a friend of ours. He knew her and from his Hamburg? Wife. Or, or what? No, they, she, they know her. They know them through my, my mother's friend. So, um, so we stayed there, and it wasn't, it wasn't you know, can you, you can imagine you come in on, and, and you're all dirty. I had boots on, you know, riding boots. Mm. I couldn't get them off. Why? Because my feet, my my feet were I I, I was in the train for days and days. So they were swollen. They were so swollen. They were so swollen. I was I never I remember, we had this duffel bag, and we were on the train to nowhere, and I was I just went to sleep. And my mother kept calling me. She said, "How can you sleep? How can you sleep?" I said, "I can't sleep. I was just so exhausted." Mm -hmm. And you're dirty. Can you imagine? For weeks and weeks, you can't take a bath and nothing. And the and, and my boots. When we got there, I don't know so how. You were I, about 18 at this point. Yeah, I don't know how I got them off. Yeah. So, anyways, we stayed there, and then my mother decided. I, she, my mother said, if I have to live, if I have to live in a chicken coop, I and it's and call it my own. I don't want to live with, you know, being a, a guest, you know. You are just on the, uh, how do you say it? Just a guest. Mm. They they want you, you know, but not really, yeah, <laughs> you know. Sure, sure. Everything is inconvenient, you sure. know. They that what they did, did, did they did do the best they could. I mean, they mm -hmm. gave up their couch, they gave up, you know, and shared everything with you. you so know? what happened next? And then we went back to Hamburg. We went back to what, Hamburg. Was the bombing still going on? Or were we talking about? No, the that was all morning, over. It was all. Everything was, uh, you know, the war was still going on. But mm. people just went back and duck. Some people went back actually to their place where they had lived, and lived in the basement underneath it. They dug themselves out, yeah. and that's what we did. Yeah. That's what we did. In your apartment. Building? Stone by stone. No, we went to another area. Not there. I see. Not there. Stone by stone. So you just dug yourself out a hole? And out of a hole, but that was another uh, area. It was also an mm -hmm. apartment. And uh, Did somebody say, you can live here? Or, or did you just do it, or what? Uh, I don't even know what, uh, I don't know whether pe we, we, you had to have a permit. Mm -hmm. I think people just did it. Mm -hmm. So how did you feed yourself through all this? Thing? Oh, well, they always gave ration. Yeah. And it's a funny thing, when they did the bombing in 1943, all of a sudden, you know, to keep the people, keep the peace, keep keep them, you know, s as uh, insane. I mean, you you. Uh, so they gave. Uh, they 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 said, oh, you get uh, butter. You know, butter was very scarce, mm. and all of a sudden everything was there. You know, mm. you could eat well, and and I mean, you had more than you uh, normally have, yeah. and they just did that to just keep the people. You know. Mm. So they wouldn't rise up? Or right, something. right, right, right. So you went back to Hamburg and, and dug yourself out of yeah, a hole? Yeah, and they give you a ration. You know, mm. they, you, you got your ration. You always got food. You mm. know, I mean, not much, but uh, you always survived somehow. They, be, they always made sure everything was on ration, but you always mm. got that wherever you, wherever you went. Well, why don't you tell me about the end of the war? What was that like? Oh, the so they, so when, the, oh yeah, that's, uh, oh, and that, when the, when the war was over, we lived in the basement then. We had dug out the bin and the war was still going. Mm -hmm. We still had a, a basement. What kind of news and were you getting at that point, I mean, in terms of how things were going? Oh, I don't know. I never concerned myself with mm. it. Okay. More, my mother did more than, 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 than I did. But I mean, it was obvious that it was going badly for the family. Yeah, and then, for, for the Germans was going very bad, yeah. but you see the thing of it. No, whatever you, they, you know how it is. They would lie, yeah. you know, and they kept everything quiet. Probably and the up. only, the only, uh, re, uh, the only thing I remember, they were. See, you weren't allowed to talk, even mm. to say any opinion. Mm. Whatever they would tell you in the, what you see in the newspaper, that was it. You know, mm. that was, and if you trying to this, you know, sh dispute or say anything mm -hmm. against it, then, you know, you don't know somebody's going to grab you and say, you know. Uh, so, 
how, what was the last week of the war, let's say, like? And so the last week, oh yeah, then, you know, I, in the meantime, I worked in the, uh, uh, for a pharmaceutical company. And uh, so I remember we, the, the war was still going, we were back and forth, they were very large bunkers. And many times we were sitting in the bunker, and the bunker was actually going like this. Mm. So, but the last, uh, the last uh, days, uh, it was in May, I think the war was over. I never forget the day when I was, I was on the, st I was on the subway, and next to me was this big, big, tall SS man. I mean, he was really tall, he had this shiny uniform on, and I was like, oh God, it's soon, uh, it's going to be over soon. And then pe people were saying, so then they already know the Americans were already coming in. Mm. They were already in Bavaria and, and the British. The British came into North Germany, to Hamburg, and they were all at the border. So the war was just about, you know, mm. coming to an end. And this guy said, we are going to win, you know, we are going to win the war. So it's all talk, it's gossip, and, and nothing is going to, you know. Who was he saying this? this uh, in the, on the train, mm -hmm. on the train. Just preaching to people in general? Right, 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 mm -hmm. right. And so... Uh, and the day when the war, the war was over, I was on this, that was the day when the guy was, uh, that was the day when, when they announced that, the, the, you know, the war was over, everything had collapsed. Mm -hmm. And I just did like, thank God, mm -hmm. I'm still alive. After when it was over, they, you know, when they discovered all the concentration camps, they had it posted, you know, the British posted it all over the place. And I remember people are standing there like, oh, we didn't know that what was going on, you know, and a lot of people didn't. Mm -hmm. I always hear that they said that the Germans know, but a lot of Germans didn't know. Mm -hmm. Could be they didn't want to know. They didn't yeah, know I was just going to say that that could be too. But I, I, I believe, I believe that, um, um, but then I heard something, I don't know where, where, where it came from, that they were, I don't know whether my mother told me, there was a train. We used to go out, you know, during the war time, we would go to the farmer and get mm. potatoes and butter, you know, yeah. change for exchange for something else. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, and yeah, it was outside of Hamburg. And somebody said that they heard moaning and boning. From where? In that area. That's where the concentration camp was. Wa they wa was. And, and I don't know whether the people know it or they didn't want to say it or something. Something strange was going on there. But that's all I remember. So you got back together again with your family, your sisters, uh, after the war, or what happened? Uh, yeah, we did, we did, uh, because my sister, my sister and her baby, and the baby and my younger sister, they lived in that house with the professor, I forgot now what his name was. Mm -hmm. They stayed there for, for quite a while, because they were very comfortable there, and they had no other place. So my brother-in-law was at sea, and he would always go to Bamberg to see his family. Mm. And that went for, for, for quite a while. I don't know for how many years. But then my sister came back to, back to Hamburg and she, she got her, she lived in the bunker, in the basement. Mm. She dug out a basement. Mm. And they came back and it was, it was easier for my brother-in-law because he was still at sea, you mm. know, for him to be in, 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 in Bavaria. But he, my sister didn't like it, you know. Mm -hmm. She didn't like it that much anyways, you know. If you, living in South Germany, it's, it's a big difference. But my youngest sister stayed. She stayed for a long time. So then you got to meet some American soldiers, huh? Oh, yeah. Later on, I met uh, some Americans. We went there, uh, and I met my husband in Bremen. So what was that like, meeting, yeah. meeting uh, black Americans? Yeah, there was, and the Americans, so first, but first we saw the Americans in Bavaria. 
So how uh, did you did you date a number of Americans, or how did that come about? I mean, what was that like? What was your like in meeting American blacks? Oh yeah, they or? were the Americans. They were very. They were so uh, overjoyed that when they saw blacks, you know, they didn't know that they were blacks in Germany. And they would. We would walk, and we would walk in the street, and they said, "Oh." You know, and they would stop, and they said, "Oh my goodness, you know, are there more blacks around?" They said, "We we we don't we don't." And then they were, you know, how did you survive? And then Hitler kill you? And and it it was really interesting uh, to uh, to you know to to see their reactions, you know, mm -hmm. and someone would say, "Ah," oh, they would just laugh and. And, 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 yeah, and what can I bring you? And they would go to the PX and bring all kinds of stuff. And, and you, you were able to speak English, though. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. I speak, well, not as well, you know, but I, I had English for mm -hmm. a long time. But I bet you they thought you had a real cute accent. Right? <laughs> they, they were really, it, it, it was really for them, they, they just didn't, they, they just couldn't believe, you know, that they, they were blacks. Mm. In in in, uh, in in Germany. In France, they had seen a lot, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. But you did end up dating at least one soldier. Yeah, uh, one or two. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I I one one day and we went to Bra oh that was because this black lady Tanda Henny. I don't know why we went there, and that's where I met my husband. Somehow she Your she was, was he was in the uh, um, uh, ammunition he was with the ammunition depot. I see. Yeah. And what was his name and what was his rank? Uh, or? His, he was sergeant first class. Yeah. What was his name? And William William Fordham. I see. Yeah. And so, what did you guys do on a date? Oh, we just went dancing. You know, they they, they had dancing uh, out uh, in uh, different places. Would that be uh, like dancing was supplied by the uh, yeah, armed forces or by, by the German people? No, 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 no. That was on the, uh, the supplied by the by the uh, by the Americans. USO. Or something? Yeah, by the yeah. yeah, it was there. But then they also had a place where the where the uh, Germans. For the, it was, I know, I'm, I remember one time I went, that's when I went, that's when I met him the first time. He was going with the blonde girl. And she's she very pretty, she was real blonde. German? A German girl, yeah, mm -hmm. right. I think he always wanted to marry her. Mm -hmm. He did, he was very much in love with her. And uh, I couldn't, I have to, her picture there someplace. And she, um, I think that was. I think that's why we, our our marriage never worked out. I think he was really in love with her, but when he told his mother and his sister, they they said, "If you if you bring her here, we have no space for her." Mm -hmm. And where was here? Uh, and to Pennsylvania. See, my his sister lived in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. His mother lived in North Carolina. And they, but that's one thing I could never understand how they, I mean, now I'm beginning to understand it, but at that time I couldn't understand why they had so much hatred against white people. Mm -hmm. I could never understand that. But, you know, as I go now that <laughs> it took many, many years mm -hmm. for me to, to realize that, but I'm, you know, I'm not a person who, I could never, you know, hate anybody. No matter what race they are, and no matter what they they have done, but maybe these people, you know, they have really suffered. And my my mother-in-law uh, used to tell me how they suffered, you know, and what they had to experience. And my oldest, my sister-in-law in Pennsylvania, where I stayed, in Chester, Pennsylvania, she was even more so. And she said, if he he had come, he used to send pictures of this girl, and so she said. Uh, she, she said, she told him, and she said, if you bring her here, I have no room for her. Mm. So you got married and stayed over there? Or what uh, yeah, I got married. I, got, I met him in Bremerhaven, and then he started to write to me. I went back to Hamburg, and he started to write to me. And then, 
and then I, I don't, then, oh, and then he was transferred from, from Bremen, which was in the north, northern part of Germany. He went to Bamberg. And that's where he was, that, that's where he stationed, that's where he was stationed, and that's where I got married. In Breiden Güsbein, in a small little village. And uh, what year would that be? Now? That was in 1947. Mm -hmm. And um, I met him, I, I met him in 40, no, I met him in 46. I met him in 46, and then I went back to Hamburg, and he started to write to me. And then I went to him, then I went to Bavaria, and that's when I got married in 1947 in October. And how long um, did you stay over there? And you, you had oh, we stayed a year. I had my, and then my daughter was born, and then right after she was born, we went to the States mm -hmm. the same year. Right. We, we lived in, a, we had a very nice apartment in, in Breiden Güsbach. It was right on the road. It was a lovely, lovely place. And we fixed it all up and he was always like, he bought nice furniture and, oh, and I, I even had a maid. He wanted me to have a maid, so I had a girl coming in and, and she made lovely curtains. For the, for the apartment and always telling me, and they were blue, she's always telling me I was going to have a boy. So, um, you know, she came and, and cooked and, and everything. It was just, you know, it wasn't really, but he, you know, in those days. And uh, so then was time, came time for me to go to the hospital. Uh, they kept me in the hospital for 10 days already because I was overweight and I had high blood pressure and everything else. So I stayed in the hospital for uh, 10 days before my daughter was born and then when she was born. I, uh, I was, I, I never realized how I, how I was in the womb all by myself. <laughs> and it was a, you know, it wasn't like a, you know, it was a big womb. There like a was ward. A, yeah, it was a lot of beds. A maternity ward. Yeah. And you had it, was, it all to yourself. I had it all to myself. Mm. And uh, I, I didn't know, you know, I didn't realize. I had no idea. When did until you realize? Much, until, until much later until much, much later. And what did you realize then? That, uh, you know, that there was all, there was this separation with the blacks, you know, and, and uh, whites. In the army? In the army, right. I knew they were separated, you know, I mean, everywhere you went, the, 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 the blacks would say, yeah, they are, you know, they are the whites and we are the blacks and uh, blah, 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 and sometimes they got in, uh, they didn't get into too many flights. But um, so this coming, coming into, going into the hospital, you know, I, I, I didn't, uh, it never dawned on me. Mm. And then the Polish girl came in. She was not an American girl, she was Polish. She had a baby and they brought her into the room. Until then I was all by myself. But she was white? Yes. But she was Polish? But she was Polish. Was she married to a, to a black soldier or something? That I don't even mm. remember. Mm. Maybe she was. But this was your first taste of uh, prejudice or segregation. Yeah, right? but I didn't realize it, mm. you know. I didn't realize it. Well, welcome to America. Yeah. <laughs> I had, I don't know, it's, uh, it's very strange. I had lots of experience, even, you know, here in this country. And it's not until much later that I realized, oh, this person was prejudiced. But at the time, you know, when it's, I, I, I'm not aware of it. Mm. So, um, well, maybe my daughter always said, maybe that's what made you survive. Mm. Because I never really, you know, I was really not, not, um, I don't know how you would say it, how you can, uh, I wasn't affected by it. Mm. I just, you know, life goes on, you know, and I always felt like if, if you don't accept me, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to get angry, you know. Mm. So maybe it's a good way to be, May I? maybe not, I don't know. Mm. 
So. Um, well, what was it like when you came here? Oh, when I came here. And how did you feel about leaving Germany and everything? And, uh, uh, I wasn't very conscious. I, I, I was sad when I, you know, to leave Germany. And you came, but you had just a daughter when you left. Yeah, I had my daughter, yeah. But at that time, my marriage was not very nice, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, my brother-in-law, I remember before we left, my brother-in-law came all the way to Bamberg. He asked me if I was happy, and I didn't answer that question. You know, and he could see on my face that, you know, things were like they should. But um, so we left, just left it there, and we left for the United States. And, I, you know, so when I got here, we, we, we landed in Fort Hamilton. I'm sure you know what Fort Hamilton, huh, in Brooklyn? Oh, yeah. That's where we, that's where, that's where we landed. Mm -hmm. Never forget 1940, uh, 1948, and uh, on the fourth of, of, of October, in 1948, I came to the United States. So that was the beginning. Then from there, uh, we went to um, we stayed stayed there a couple nights, and then we went to. Pennsylvania, where my uh, my husband's sister was living, and uh, were you acceptable to her? Yes. Oh, yeah. They were very nice to me. They were very nice to me. But she always, she always made sure. She always would tell me. Now she says, if you haven't been right, she said you wouldn't be in my house. Mm -hmm. And she would say that many times, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and and his mother told me the same thing. See, later on, I stayed with her. I went to North Carolina, mm -hmm. where he was, uh, you know, from. And I stayed with her, and I was very well received. And they would always say, well, she's very pretty. She's very pretty. And, um, and the mother told me the same thing. Mm -hmm. And yet she got along very well with the white people. You know, did, they, did she say what her experiences were that led her to, uh, to feel this Well, way. she said we were treated so bad, and, mm -hmm. you know, they go back to the slavery. I mean, yeah. they, and, and uh, how, how, you know, during that time, now I'm learning all this. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't know that much about it, about the lynching. Mm -hmm. And she would tell me, you know, that it, it, now that I think about it, these things almost went over my head. Mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't comprehend when she was telling me that uh, you walk through the neighborhood, and here, here hangs a black man. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me about all this. Mm -hmm. She had seen this stuff. Yeah. And she said that, um, she said, don't go, she said, that, well, I didn't hardly go around, you know, but she said, don't, she said, don't go to the uh, white neighborhood. That's, that was the time. That was the time when the lynch this lynching was still going on mm. in the in the in the forties. Uh, mm. I'm just learning this. So you had uh, one other child? No, two. So you have two. You have I two have children? two. Yeah, one is living here now, and that yeah. the one who's uh, the last one is uh, Bill for him. He's he named after his father. The so one who's you have three children altogether. Three, yeah. yeah. The one who is uh, a teacher, Waldorf teacher. So he's back in Germany. He's back in Germany now. His son. Yeah. And your daughter is also back in Germany. She well, she lives. She's been living there. Yeah. See, I look at people as human beings, mm -hmm. and and. Not lo not looking at their colors, but I think even if I had to ex even if I had experienced uh, traumatic things like the black people here, uh, I, I don't think I just could dish it out and, and have hatred for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they are they are good people and bad people, and some people are prejudiced because they don't know any better. You know, they haven't exposed they haven't been exposed to blacks. So they don't know anything about him. So you, you I don't know. I, maybe, maybe that makes me makes me different. Looking things in a different way.
than, than, than other people do. Well, you've certainly had a unique uh, experience. Uh, you seem to have been the, the one and only in many situations, or certainly one of the few. Yeah, I think so too. Even An my outsider. Yeah, even my sisters, you know, and uh, well, I feel, you know, it was, there was a time I, I never felt comfortable in this country for some reason. It, it, and it, uh, it wasn't only because of my marriage. So maybe, maybe it could have been that uh, things were different. Uh, um, but for some reason, I never felt comfortable here. And it was in the 70s, I remember, uh, when, when I was working, I just wanted to go back to Germany so badly. And, it, it, and it then, you know, as, you know, the more I studied anthroposophy and came into, you know, to, to, came, to, came to, to find my own self, I began to realize that there's a reason for it, that I'm here, you know. Mm. It's not by chance. And, that, and then I really, you know, I've I become to come into terms with it and accept it effect, and then I just took it from there. But I can never say that I really was happy here, but I, I know, just felt like I, I'm here, you know, for a reason, and I brought up three children here, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was my karma. So um, from then on, it was easier, you know, it was mm -hmm. easier. I didn't have to scratch always saying, oh, I wish, why did I have to come here? I wish I wasn't here, you know. And um, I, I know it was in the 70s. And uh, because I, I, I couldn't really, uh, I had to understand, you know, many things. I, had, I guess I had to grow up, I had to get older to really realize. But I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to miss this, you know, experience. I, that I still, feel I, I'm very rich. I have, you know, very, I, the experience I have had by coming to this country and what I have learned has only, you know, make me a strong person.